Good afternoon. I'm happy to see you here in the press conference. It will be a press conference devoted to the informal meeting of the EU Ministers for Health. Introductory speeches will be given to the Minister for Health of Latvia, Guntis Belevich, and the and Mr. Miko from the Commission. Mr. Mr. Minister, you have the floor. Dear media representatives, I'm very glad to see you here in this press conference where I will inform you of the outcomes of the EPSCO meeting. <coughs> also, the EU candidates, countries, and EEA countries and ministers from these countries took place in this meeting. We discussed two very important issues affecting public health in Europe, namely alcohol policy and nutrition policy. Given the tragic events in the Mediterranean over the last two days, we also discussed the issue on migration. We agreed with the ministers that the situation should be addressed, addressing the root causes of this problem. We have to introduce a complex approach, taking into account also health aspects. As regards the alcohol policy and the need for it, some statistical data. A half of the suicides committed in Europe are alcohol-related. One-fourth of accidents at work are alcohol-related. One-fourth of employees at big companies suffer from alcohol dependency. 155 billion euro per year. This is the money that EU countries lose every year due to alcohol consumption. Therefore, with our colleagues, ministers, we discussed a new alcohol policy framework. We discussed the need for a new EU alcohol strategy that would serve as an instrument, as a tool to reduce, reduce alcohol harm in the EU member states. I have to say that the EU has already gained experience in setting alcohol standards in the international market and coordinating our national policies. There is no doubt that five priorities set out in the EU alcohol strategy are still very important. They are the following pricing and tax measures, commercial marketing of alcohol and limiting thereof, reinforced legal measures to reduce drink driving, and public awareness raising on alcohol-related harm. As regards the challenges of the nutrition policy in the EU, we discussed the risks caused by unhealthy diet. Non-communicable diseases, mainly cardiovascular diseases, cancer, chronic respiratory diseases, diabetes, and mental problems are the greatest causes of death in the world. These diseases are caused by unhealthy lifestyles, and one of the main elements of this is food and nutrition. It is a well-known fact that 70 to 80 percent of health care spending go to treating chronic diseases. These, this spending in the EU is 700 million, billion euro per year. This uh, figure is expected to increase over the next years. Over the last decades, as a result of the changes in behavior of the Europeans, the number of obese and overweight people has increased, and this trend can be observed at all age groups. Most non-communicable diseases and deaths related to it could be overcome if we address the main 
reasons for that, smoking, unhealthy diet, lack of physical activity, and overuse or abuse of alcohol. At the end of February, under the Latvian presidency, there was a high-level conference. Healthy lifestyle, food and physical activities for children and young people at schools. This conference was organized and its aim was to improve safe food policy in Europe. On the basis of the results of the conference and outcomes of the conference, we prepared a report on the main conclusions and recommendations and we presented these to the ministers. These conclusions set out, first of all, to continue implementing policies, reducing social inequalities, emphasizing natural and balanced nutrition at schools, free lunches at schools is an important precondition for reducing social inequalities. Secondly, health education is very important to shape habits of children. Thirdly, we have to evaluate the role of modern technologies and innovative approaches in training and educating our children on healthy food. Fourthly, we have to reinforce our policy to reduce the negative impact of marketing of unhealthy food to children. Fifth, we have to work on policies facilitating improvement of the content of the food, reducing the sugar, salt content, trans, acid, trans fatty acid content, and we should facilitate the consumption of vegetables, fruit, and water. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. And I will, I'm ready to answer your questions. This Minister Mbilevich, Thank you very much, Minister. And now I will give the floor to representative of the European Commission, uh, Mr. Miko. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Uh, I would like to start first with a cordial thanks to Minister Belevich and, and his team. I think they organized perfectly a very useful discussion of member states on the issues which are of utmost importance for every citizen in the Europe. Uh, and before I come to the content of discussion, I just want very shortly to address the issue of migrants, because you know about the events which happened the last weekend, which had this tragic uh, end, and we are obviously very concerned about that, and we are happy that the issues related to the health part of that were also taken by ministers uh, today. Um, we know, and we already indicated clearly, that the root cause of that needs to be addressed, but there is also the immediate element of the problem which should be uh, responsed uh, very soon, and uh, we announced already yesterday um, that uh, obviously the Commission cannot address the issue alone, but in collaboration with Member States and with support of Member States, we could help the most affected countries of the Union. So we activated the process within the Health Security Committee and asked the states which are impacted on their uh, immediate emergency needs. We have got reaction already from Italy, from Malta. We have had reactions today from the ministers from Greece and Cyprus. And we also encouraged ministers to to say, to find out, to see in which way they could address the concrete needs of the named countries and uh, uh, do it in a, in a fast way using the framework of the, secu of the Health Security Committee. Now back to the agenda of uh, the two days meeting uh, of the informal council. Um, uh, first, I would like to start by uh, clearly explaining that our commissioner was very, very sorry he couldn't participate in person because all issues which were discussed are very, very close to his heart and they are actually on top of his priorities. 
Uh, nevertheless, I was here to replace him and to pass his views and his approaches to the problems. Uh, uh, we have a very clear priorities which were set up uh, recently and we have been here mainly in a listening mood. We know that the most of the competencies in the given areas are uh, uh, at the side of the member states, but we wanted to know how and in which way Commission can uh, effectively support and help the efforts of member states in the na named areas. We are committed to do so, and uh, this is all in line with the three Ps presented by our Commissioner on many occasions, which is basically three key elements of his approach, prevention, promotion and protection saying to prevent people from getting ill, to, to promote healthy living and to protect people from infectious diseases, food crisis and uh, other threats. And I think this is a guiding principle to the approach. Now, regarding the, yesterday's discussion on the alcohol policy, you already heard that alcohol misuse is a matter of very deep concern across the Union and places an enormous burden on society in terms of human suffering, costs to health systems and reduced efficiency in the workforce. Uh, probably you heard that the per capita consumption in U European Union uh, is declining in the last 25 years by more than 10 percent. But it is still a fact that Europe is consuming the alcohol the most in the world. It is more than 10 litres of pure alcohol, alcohol per person. Each year it is estimated that 120,000 European Union citizens aged between 15 to 64 years die from alcohol-related harm, with a yearly cost of the harm linked to such consumption, which was already mentioned by Mr. Minister, estimated at almost 160 billion euros every year. Obviously, as I said, Member States have the main competence and responsibility to address harmful alcohol consumption, but the Commission is keen to support and complement national efforts in these regards. Commissioner Andriukaitis wishes to find the best way to work closely together in the next few years with Member States and the various upcoming presidencies to reduce alcohol-related harm. Regarding the nutrition policy, the Commission is convinced that working together to improve European diets can help reduce the personal and economic burden of chronic diseases. One way to improve diets is by making it easier to everyone to choose the healthier option, for instance, by reformulating food. Here, we have already an example of success, which was the member state effort supported by Commission with voluntary reduction of salt. We had a very broad, very comprehensive exchange of views today, and obviously I am bringing all this information back to Commission and Commissioner. Uh, he is very interested on the Minister's points of view, which will be very useful for future work to build on the existing strategy for Europe on nutrition, overweight and obesity, and the pending action plan for childhood obesity. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Now you can ask your questions. Uh, the working languages are Latvian and English, and please name the medium you're representing. TV3 News. I have a question to both Minister and the Commissioner Representative on Migration. What are the health aspects? How could Europe help to reduce migratory pressures to Europe? Uh, I can report back the opinions voiced by the member states and Mr. Miko, I think, will give the Commission's point of view. It is clear that the Mediterranean countries are very concerned about the migration and migratory flows. It is clear that it is not only 
the issue related to migration. It also has a health dimension. And Cyprus mentioned that they have 150,000 hospital beds in Cyprus. And these migrants with infectious diseases, they come to Cyprus with one or two boats. And in this case, the government in Cyprus would require the assistance of other countries to transport these patients to other countries. Similar views were expressed by Greece. Their health system lacks resources. They face significant burden in solving uh, health issues of migrants and refugees. They have financial problems, and therefore Cyprus, Malta, Greece, and other southern countries asked the EU to share the expenses, the expenditure required. At the same time, many member states emphasized that migration is an issue where we have to find general solutions. Addressing the root causes of this problem, as we know, as we speak, well, in Brussels, a 10-point plan has been adopted in order to address this problem. But the representative from Greece said that in this 10-point plan, there is no reference to health issues. All proposals, well, this was an extraordinary issue, extraordinary item that was included in the agenda. We devoted half an hour in discussing this issue. All member states, many member states took the floor and their comments have been noted down and we will forward them to the relevant institutions dealing with migration issues. But we understand that the initiative is, of course, in the competence of foreign and home affairs ministers. Yeah, let me to add that obviously the problem has two layers. One is more long term and should be addressed in the longer term uh, uh, strategy, which is under discussion within the Commission and which should have also the health considerations. But when I was speaking about the emergency measures which are needed immediately, they really deal with issues, as Minister already said. First of all, it is a capacity of the range uh, countries to deal with a problem. Uh, basically, they were not uh, constructed or prepared for having hundreds of patients in a single day, for example, which could happen. They were the, the situations when all the people uh, uh, coming as a migrants have been dehydrated and required a hospital care, which is simply impossible to provide in such a small country like Malta, for example. So it is clear that uh, there is a need to find emergency answers uh, to these issues, and it should be in the form of emergency kits or logistical support, maybe in kind material, it may be the issues of providing the vaccines, but also potentially, you know, to allow the capacity of hospitals to take care for the migrants in other countries, and that's why we we were turning on the ministers to find out the options which could be offered in a short time, because the problem is that emergency is there, it's now, it's a concrete people suffering which need to be addressed very fast. We have got already the list of the needs from three or of the countries, I'm sure it will be very, very uh, short time, we will get it from all four, and uh, the, the Health Security Committee is going to meet already to, today afternoon to, to try to find the matches between the offers and the needs.
Um, Mike Collier from Agence France Press. A uh, question for Minister Belevich. A couple of questions, actually. You mentioned that you, Europe needs new alcohol policy, um, but then you just listed the sort of the five pre-existing uh, desires or targets that you're aiming for. Was there anything in the discussions today which was really new? And um, you also mentioned the importance of uh, alcohol pricing but you can't walk around Riga without noticing that uh, alcohol here is extremely cheap. So would you be in favor of uh, increasing prices on Latvian alcohol, maybe adopting a Scandinavian type model? Thank you very much for this question. I will start uh, my answer with the national aspect regarding the price for alcohol in Latvia. Experience of other countries, and by the way, recently in our parliament here in Riga, we had a conference dedicated to issues of alcohol, and internationally recognized experts informed us that not only pricing is an important issue, but also the purchasing capacity of residents. There are people where uh, price of alcohol is maybe 50 percent higher than here, or even more higher than that. But average income of uh, people is, um, is also much higher accordingly, which means that one of the most efficient measures uh, to, to limit binge drinking is uh, to increase ex excise tax. Uh, if this is done alongside with uh, limiting marketing, uh, with limiting availability, plus also some educative activities or campaigns. But uh, it is clear that uh, in order just to, to, with the increase of the purchasing capacity, can we increase all the time prices for alcohol? By the way, Lithuania has some bitter experience in this respect. Uh, with the rising well-being of people, they, they made excise tax cheaper. They lowered prices of alcohol. Income went up, alcohol down. Uh, this. Uh, led to the conclusion, uh, which is still a problem now for many years, they cannot overcome it. I understand that the price of alcohol could be and should be higher, but it uh, should be paralleled with the purchasing capacity of people. And it is clear that every time when we discuss uh, the increase of excise tax uh, in um, Cabinet of Ministers, we have a lot of public organizations uh, fighting for interest of the industry, and it is very difficult to move forward with this issue. More specifically speaking and answering, yes, from the 1st of July, we plan an increase in excise tax. From the 1st of July this year, yes, alcohol will be more expensive, and we have the plan uh, the newly uh, got resources from higher price of alcohol just to use this amount uh, to pay for free lunches of children uh, for the fourth grade pupils because until now we have free lunches up to the first the third grade uh, and now this will include also the fourth grade uh, now the second part of the question was there anything new in our discussion well today we didn't uh, talk about the details of the new alcohol policy. We didn't focus on specific aspects. Rather, today we talked uh, about the general issue. If this alcohol policy, the new policy in general, is needed in Europe, as you may know, there was already one alcohol policy in the European Union. The policy has inspired, it has ended. And the discussion uh, focused on uh, whether there is a need to have a new alcohol policy. The delegation said that during the years when there was the alcohol policy, uh, countries uh, allocated resources for collecting evidence. And evidence and facts were indeed collected, proving that excessive use of alcohol causes very significant harm to public health. Uh, very many countries uh, spoke at the meeting. Uh, 
and uh, the opinions. M more, than, more than 20 countries uh, took the floor, actually. If you need, I can provide more precise st statistics later. The majority of countries uh, said that, yes, uh, we need a new alcohol policy, and uh, only two member states or two countries um, who spoke in a very diplomatic language, which was uh, yes or no, uh, and nobody said that, that no, we don't need a new alcohol policy. Absolute negation was not expressed by anyone. Uh, Greece said that it is very hard to discuss alcohol policy during the days when such a tragedy is uh, taking place as we speak. Uh, so maybe some nuances appeared in views of some member states. A new thing was on labeling, maybe that on labels, uh, more details on content uh, should be indicated, what kind of additives or substances are added to the alcoholic drink, and maybe calorific content could also be added to information on the label. Yeah. Yeah, so like Carlos. Carlos Petersons, news agency Leta. I have a question on indicating calories on alcohol, alcohol labeling. What is your evaluation of this idea? Is personally. Me personally, as somebody who has studied medicine, I understand very well the harm to the health related to obesity. There are skeletal disorders because you have to carry this excessive weight. It is also a cause for cardiovascular diseases, type 2 diabetes, and other diseases. People, the public, believe, and rightly so, that overweight comes from calories, uh, unhealthy diet, calories, but they do not take into account that also alcohol contains many calories. And I believe that in this area, we need to raise public awareness. We intend to carry out such campaigns in Latvia for the current planning period, there are European funds available. We will promote healthy lifestyles systematically over the next six years, also informing the public, irrespective of the fact whether the EU decides to indicate on the labeling the content of calories, we will raise public awareness of the fact that alcohol contains many calories. Okay, a uh, very short reaction, as I see Minister uh, wanted also me to add something on that. First of all, I will, I will build on what was said at the end. Irrespective if EU decides, I have to say that EU decision is driven by decision of individual member states. So obviously if we will have a consensus for that, that's the different situation as if there is no consensus. Just, just a comment because EU doesn't decide alone, we decide in, in collective. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I want to say that uh, certainly the information about the calories is one of the informations which may be very useful for making the proper choice in terms of nutrition and the calorie content. The question is which way is the most effective uh, to pass this information and which way will be supported by the member states uh, uh, in the future discussion. We heard several differing, differing views on that, but certainly the issue is relevant. Uh, I just want to say that we have already announcement of the beer uh, sector which uh, decided to provide this information voluntarily on their brands that may be one of the ways how the information can be passed to the consumers as well. Thank you. One more question, please. Andrei Yakovlev, Pirmais Baltias Canals. Mr. Minister, 
In your formal, informal meetings, did you report only the success story of Latvia, but did you also refer to some unsuccessful stories that we have experienced? During this meeting, although I am a minister for health of Latvia, during this meeting, I was the Minister for Health of the EU because I was chairing the EBSCO Council. And your question, I understand your question. Maybe it is related to the yesterday's rallies. I informed the Ministers for Health of this demonstration. But you are misled about this uh, success story. It is out of context. I referred to the success story in the EU, our cooperation, mutual cooperation. We have improved a lot of health-related issues. Also, the fact that there was an alcohol policy, it is a success story because we gathered evidence that alcohol abuse, well, there are scientific evidence that it harms health. Today. We examine the fact whether we should have a common stance on reducing sugar content in food. And we refer to this uh, success story related to sal salt content reduction because it is a common EU success story. Well, by referring to these success stories, we develop our further approach. As you know, health policy is the competence of the member states. In EU planning documents, programming documents, the Europe 2020 strategy, for example, they do not contain a word on health. But 2020 is not far away, and I believe that the time has come, and also other member states believe so, that we have to discuss what the new planning documents will look like. Maybe they should contain health-related issues. This was the reference to success stories. We did not report on our success stories or our failures as regards our health policy. I mentioned to the colleagues that there is a strike of the medical professionals and it is related to insufficient financing in Latvia. And then I informed the ministers that I fully agree to the, their position because the financing is not sufficient. But this meeting was not devoted to discussing the successes or failures of our health policy in Latvia. Thank you very much. I conclude the press conference.